Hello everyone and welcome back to the show where we make amiibo from some of our favorite characters. This video is Hollow Knight and I had so much fun with this sculpt. You can see we're starting off with some poly modeling. I know I didn't talk about the difference between those two last time but for anyone who's curious poly modeling is when you're working directly from geometry and extruding things out and sculpting is a lot more what it sounds like which you know is a little more traditional and natural feeling but for characters with such simple shapes like this, it's been a great lesson in poly modeling. So you can see we've got basically all the main elements here already. Such a fantastically simple character design. Extremely effective. I think I read somewhere that the hallmarks of an effective character design are um, a recognizable silhouette and another good test is whether or not a child would be able to draw it uh, recognizably. So here we are, we've already joined the limbs together and got the main part of the body. The cape will come later. I'm just sorting out some of these edge loops, making sure they all flow nicely so we don't have any issues in posing down the line. Now here, true to my word, I did improve the vinyl texture from last video. I found this on some forum <laughs> somewhere. So thank you to whoever posted about that several years ago asking for a vinyl texture because it came in handy for this video. So it'll look pretty deliciously photo real when it's all done and rendered. I tried a new method for cutting holes for the eyes this time that worked much better. I got that from the great Josh Gambrel's channel. And basically I was able to join the ring around the eye directly to the mesh instead of just doing a messy kind of boolean cut and hoping for the best and that worked way better than what I usually do. So here we've already placed the rig inside of our little knight here. We're just weight painting in some of these bones so that when we pose it, nothing stretches weird or anything like that. You can see we're moving the leg, uh, moving the head around, just making sure everything's okay. And it's a pretty simple rig, obviously. I used, I believe, the Rigify add-on and used the simple human model and here you can see there's some creasing there. So what I actually did is I used a mix of rigging to get the basic pose down. And once I had that in, I smoothed out any errors by sculpting. So this actually was a mix of sculpting and poly modeling. And it's a workflow I haven't tried before, but really, really liked. And I think I will definitely use this on future videos. So you can see here, we're able to smooth out some of this geometry and really get these shapes to be accurate and full. Because you can see in the reference behind the knight, his body is extremely simple, which actually brings its own set of challenges. It's easy to get the initial geometry down, but any um, problems or issues become just that more obvious, I think, because there's nothing else to distract your eye. It's just, you look at it and it's correct or it's not. So we've got the pose pretty much in place. We will continue to edit a little bit and tweak just to get things just perfect. The drawing behind him is a bit uh, too exaggerated for a 3D form. So we did edit it a little bit just so that it'll look better in this medium. And here we go with the nail. You know, I'm not, it's a, canonically this is supposed to be an old nail, but I never thought it looked like one. Um, but here we go modeling that. It's pretty simple shapes. Now here you'll see me sculpting it, and you 3D modelers out there will notice that you don't see me retopologize this thing, and that is because I actually ended up um, not using this sculpt method in the end. What I did is just poly model it with some inward extrusions around those cracks instead of sculpting it, just because all these polygons, it, it's okay to have them here because it's such a small model but it's not very professional, it's not best practice, and also the shape would just be much cleaner if I poly modeled it, so I did replace it off camera. So now he's got his weapon in hand, <laughs> and I know there are multiple different versions of this weapon, but for this we're just using the preliminary one that you see in the promotional art behind him. And I wanted to base it off of um, an iconic pose. I guess I should talk about how I picked that. I was going to do an original pose or him just standing, but for a toy showcasing a character, I want to pick a pose that's iconic and dynamic. 
So this one was perfect. So here we're going in with the cape now, or <laughs> whatever this thing is, uh, his little flappy bits. Uh, we're using Bezier curves, and this is a really fun method um, for getting these kind of shapes. You can use it in hair, uh, obviously something like this, cloth, and the way it works is you have three curves. One is the one that is part of the cape, the other uh, controls the cross section, and the other controls how wide the ends are. And so you can get a lot of control with very uh, easy modeling process because you aren't actually working with polygons. It's sort of filling in the shapes for you and then you convert it to a mesh later. So we can just move things around whichever way we want and there's no sort of clipping errors or anything like that. And it just makes the process so much easier. And these shapes were just absolutely perfect <laughs> for the shape of the little strands on his cape. So now that's pretty much set in and we're just giving everything materials, making sure everything is the right color. Uh, I think you could see I dropped in the, the other sword model there and we're ready to put him on his stand. Now, I made the stand in the last video and the great thing about that is I can just reuse the, the um, base of it without the specific textures on top for every amiibo now. So I, can, I don't have to make that every single time, thank goodness. And for his, I placed in some stones here that um, I believe we will finish up in a bit. You can see I'm starting it now. We just used, for anyone who's curious, some radial arrays um, rotating around an empty. Just subdivided out some cubes there. And here you can see I rotated around. Uh, so here we go with the box art. Last time I did not record this, but I think some people were curious. And it's a really fun part of the process for me. So here I took that pose that I was working from uh, in the video. And you can see I'm just using Photoshop to extend out the borders of this image. Uh, so that there's no clipping on the box itself, and so that we just have a little bit more freedom when placing the image on there, so we don't have to put it in a position where you're not going to see any sort of edges. We can have a lot more wiggle room when you do this. It's a little bit of trouble, but with a sort of gradient blurry background like this, it's not a huge deal, and it definitely pays off. You can see I'm cleaning up some lines there, just making sure that it's not too noticeable. I hope it's not. <laughs> I think the bottom is pretty clean and the top is uh, good enough. <laughs> so that pattern, that image you see in the bottom down there is from the title screen. And the line, the dividing line motif that I decided to go with is based off of the logo for the game. And while we're on the topic of graphic design, I just want to compliment this game's logo. I think a lot of games these days feel like they can only make their logos a bold, distressed, white sans serif uh, as seen on screen here, and I'm so sick of that. And I just love seeing a game logo that isn't afraid to add some more detail and have this kind of beautiful, ornate pattern to it. So I really wanted to work that into this somehow. And I found the perfect spot in this little dividing line here, which has a surprisingly uh, vast amount of room for putting personality into this packaging. Um, that's something that their real amiibo boxes tend to do a really good job on, and different, or it's what's able to differentiate the different series of amiibo, I think. So there we've got that in. Just dropped a little shadow under it to make it pop off the background a bit more, and we'll place in the logo. What's fun about <laughs> doing packaging for existing properties is I can just <laughs> grab all the images online they don't actually have to redraw logos. Although sometimes I will do that just so I can up the resolution. Um, and here we go, just placing in the name of the knight. This font is called Trojan Pro. I think it's free, that, or you can find free versions around. I did not have to because I purchased a font pack for school. Uh, you probably just saw that I placed the text over that blue gradient down there. I was thinking of having the name large because that's what they tend to do on the real amiibo boxes where they have the character's name twice really big and I thought it would also mirror the aesthetic of the title screen in game but it just didn't quite fit for this project so now you see we're just filling in the back here and back to placing it in our scene now so let's texture that box right after we group up the knight himself and just make it one object that we can move around you can see I'm applying all my modifiers and everything just basically doing some 
post-processing work so that it's easy to drag into our new scene that we'll use for rendering. Place them inside our box here, and now we will texture everything. You can probably see Arlo here, I think. Yep, there he is. <laughs> Uh, I could just grab that from that file. I'm gonna have to do some reorganization later. But yeah, here we go. Now we can actually place the textures directly onto the box. Super easy, because I made the textures the exact same dimensions. And can you guess what this is? It is the geo from the game, the currency. So I wanted to add just one more kind of personalized detail to the stand. And I thought a great one would be the money that flies out from enemies when you when you kill them in the game. And so I know that in the game they stand up and kind of spin like coins, but for this I thought it would look nicer if they were kind of laying on top of each other like this. And we'll just add some random rotation to the stone, uh, just to make it look a little more natural and weathered. And just make sure that this plastic rod is stuck in there correctly. Um, just putting a little hole around it, just for that little bevel that is small detail, but I think it pays off. And that'll be it, so let's hop into our context shots. Look at that vinyl texture. <laughs> I think it paid off. Let me know what you guys think of it in the comments. I am really proud of this render. I rendered it in 8K so I could do these beautiful zooms for you guys that I did not have last time. Uh, giving you a bit more of a in-depth view of the model itself. And once again with the front and back box art. Here we have a nice pan of the front here. Oh, it makes me wish this was real. By the end of these videos, I'm always just wishing that I actually had one. <laughs> and you know, hey, maybe uh, someone will see this and it'll, it'll uh, demand for it will grow enough that they'll actually do it. I mean, we got Shovel Knight Amiibo, so it is definitely possible for Hollow Knight to get its own Amiibo. But there you go, we did it. Episode 2, Hollow Knight. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. If you have any suggestions for Amiibo you want to see in the future, you can of course leave those down in the comments below, and I will read every single one of them. And until next time, bye guys.